Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's time for Off the Press. Our guest, Judith Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is joining us this morning from Kano State. Good morning to you, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, and good morning to our viewers all over the world. You're welcome. Uh, let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads Naira crumbles to $920 a dollar. Fuel marketers push for fresh price hike. Uh, I'll give you the riders there. Fuel price can't remain at 617 Naira, with Naira falling below 900 to a dollar. That's Ipman. Nigerians back subsidy removal. FG replies Obaseki. Labor wants NNPC probe. Let's start with that. So here we have the what seemed like um, a relief last week. The Naira started to gain some sort of value. And, and here we are again today. It's, it's losing ground. 920. What's now, your take on this? Now, when your economy is not productive compared to other foreign economy, uh, there will be, and then you rely so much on dollar for all of your transaction, there's definitely going to be the challenge which you have. Uh, for us to make Naira to be competitive, we have to grow our economy locally. And the economy, you have to grow, grow your gross domestic product. Now, if you have not grown our economy locally, we always witness this free for all that we are witnessing. Because you, have, you must put in place every indicator that will allow your economy to grow. As long as you are dependent on, on import and you are not growing your export, your export does not match your import. There's no way you can grow your economy. Your, 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 your currency value will be subjected to the kind of free fall that you have with the Naira. And uh, this free fall of the Naira means increase in inflation. Also, the marketers are saying it's become inevitable for them not to increase the f price of fuel, even though the government now, had told them not to do that. Now, well, um, you see, the, the, the challenge we have is that you don't run an administration based on impulse. Mm. Um, the statement the president made during his inaugural speech, he never knew that that's a policy statement. Uh, it's a policy statement. He thought it was cutting form or probably think that he was still on the campaign trail. And he missed that statement without any adequate backup plan to ensure that the economy grew and the Naira can compete with other currencies in the international market. As well, as you know, it was, it was a major blow, a major blow to our economy. The economy is highly dependent on, 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 oil, on oil and gas. Uh, Nigeria is a monoproduct economy. We take a key for whatever we make from, 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 from the sales of crude oil. Two, that is dependent on the exchange rate. Now, the government used to control the exchange rate, and then the president also said, you know what, we are going to leave it to the forces of the market. There's no country in the entire world that leaves everything to the forces of the market. There is usually one form of intervention or the other, one form of revolution or the other. I hope the president with his economic team is put in place his cabinet now. I hope his economic team will be able to advise him appropriately they will be able to come up with a template in addressing the serious problem which we have. Because this issue, if it continues like this, only God knows what will happen in this country. It's becoming pre inflation is already 25%. If you are not careful, you'll be seeing inflation eating 35, 50%. Mm. And that will not go well for the average Nigerian. And it will not go well for, for those that have claimed to come and serve the interest of the people. You yeah. seek public offices in order to serve the interest of the people, uh, to ensure that they enjoy the deliverables of democracy and the goods of society, not to inflict pains, sorrow, and tears on them. And if, if this administration is not careful and does not put its house in order, this issue they are dealing with is a keg of gunpowder that can explode any time. Right. So they need to see how we address this issue. Yes, and still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, you have the picture of that building that collapsed in Abuja. A very 
ugly looking sight, I must say. And you have a picture there of one of the victims uh, lying there stretched out in pain. Um, what, what, what did you think when you heard of this building collapse in Abuja? Now, you know, going to Abuja issue, the question you ask is who are the engineers that approved? That approved that construction? Which agency, which federal capital territory agency is responsible for the supervision of that, of that particular building? And what level of supervision did they put in place? When you see such thing happen, whether in Abuja or in Lagos, you will have seen the complicity of public public officials that you have entrusted with the responsibility of ensuring safety guidelines, mm -hmm. of ensuring compliance with due process and due diligence when it comes to construction of building. But what do we know? That's the challenge. It's after the building has collapsed that everybody will be jumping and running alter skelter instead of addressing the issue before it gets to this situation. And the funniest thing is that this is what you had. This is what you hear about. After one week, there's no head of rule. All those ones that happened in Lagos, did they sack the head of the building inspection team in Lagos? Well, there's a new sheriff in town. That. Nwike is there, so, and Nwike has ordered for the arrest of the landlord. It's not only the landlord who happens, who, who approves it. There are no agencies of government that to ensure due diligence. I agree the landlord should. She should be, should, should be, should be, should be made to answer questions. Of course, and in getting the landlord, they get the plan of the house. I understand that the original plan was violated by the landlord. And of course, then the regulators who were supposed to have inspected to make sure that there was due diligence. So everyone, so many heads will roll over this. Exactly. So that's my take. Let, let the head rules, let there be consequences for bad behavior. If there are no consequences for bad behavior, you enforce bad behavior in every aspect and every strata of society. So as far as I'm concerned, the landlord should be able to answer questions. The engineer that supervises that building should be able to answer questions. And when people lose their licenses, when they lose like, their licenses and their rights to practice as a result of not doing what is in the interest of the public or for public good, then people will begin to learn their lesson. But what do we know? All these public officials will just go scot free. When somebody go, goes against um, the original plan, let's say the building was approved for five floors, and then they change the original plan to, from five floor to 11 floor. The basic element of any building is the foundation. It's the foundation that sustains the building. So you, the foundation was initially constructed for five floors, and then you are now putting 11 floors. It will not stand. So um, let, let there be consequences for bad behavior. Well, uh, Nisam Wike uh, started work uh, talking tough. Uh, now his first major test has come. So I guess how he handles this will determine just how serious and how weighty his words a few days ago were, right? Yeah, uh, this is what Wike loves. And this is where he thrives. And um, I'm sure... Those people have played into his hand, and what he's been waiting for to lay down the gauntlet. <laughs> you know, he has been laying down the gauntlet since since he was sworn in as the minister, mm. and he has given um, he has given all the directors that don't want, he has given them a, a charge that anyone that does not want to work should 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 seek work elsewhere because he's going to give them blood pressure. So I think that he himself should not give himself blood pressure. He should assign responsibility and roles and let those that are in charge, let those that you have given assignment to in public offices to ensure due diligence and compliance, do their job, do their job, fire them, fire them and bring in some other. Once you do that, I can assure you that um, they will do what they are supposed to do. Okay, so uh, let's quickly look at some of the other headlines here on the Punch newspaper, and then we'll talk one, uh, analyze one, and then move forward. Culture minister steal a copper, group alleges. FG faces heavy criticism over 4.1% unemployment data. Family faults army silence on senator's aid allegedly killed by rogue soldiers. Nigerians stranded in UK victims of visa scam. Let's talk about this FG and the state of unemployment. 
FG faces criticism over 4.1% unemployment data. Uh, what, what do you make uh, of that percentage? You think it's low or I high? Don't know, I, I don't know where they mind that data from. I don't know where they mind that data. Hmm. From, if anybody is telling us that you only have 4%, 4.1% unemployment in Nigeria. Probably that person manufactures data. I did not mind the data from you. <laughs> um, so um, that's clear case of manipulation of data. Contrary mm. to what is... Uh, probably they, get, they got it right. With, they got it wrong in the process of their sampling. If you don't apply the correct sampling methodology, you mm. get the wrong data. So probably the sample... The, the, the wrong elements of the population, and that's how they came about. This 4.1 percent. They must, they must be, they must be playing the ostrich to have come up with this, this um, unbelievable, unbelievable data. The unemployment rate in Nigeria is not 4.1 percent. It's not even 50 percent. In my early that it be particularly 70 to 80 percent unemployment rate. I understand because there's a new matrix. Do. Yeah, I hear there's a new matrix for calculating the unemployment rate. And uh, this new international rate uh, was released yesterday, which is um, it, it kind of changed the hours, the, the way it's calculated. The way it used but to be right calculated is changed from the that, new uh, rate that's been used. Perhaps that's responsible that's why, for this. That's why I said if you use the wrong instrument to carry out your, 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 your data collection, you get a, a, wrong, a, wrong, a wrong outcome, you get the wrong the wrong data and your interpretation will be wrong, it will be faulty. So that's what I think. I don't think nobody will believe, 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 believe that. Are you, are you believing it? Nobody will buy that because <laughs> it's clear, it's evident to all of us to see that the unemployment rate is not 4.1%. If the unemployment rate is 4.1%, then the economy will be a productive economy. Then the Naira will have rebounded against the dollar because our gross domestic product will have, will have grown tremendously compared to what. We are going to be relying more on, 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 on import. Rather, we will we increase our export, which invariably will affect the, 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 the growth of the Naira positively. So I think I'm not buying that data, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are not buying that, that data. They are not buying that outcome from that, from that, from that um, survey that was carried out by, by, by the agency of the government that released the exam. On the issue of the minister, mm -hmm. still serving. I see nothing wrong with it. That's my take. Mm -hmm. he, after all, it's, it's a national service. If you're a minister and then uh, you're appointed as a minister and you're a copper, you are still serving your nation. That's my take on it. A lot of people are just playing a mountain out of the mobile. Out know, of that maybe thing. that's because that's from me. what we know and what we used to know, if you are still serving, you are not supposed to be gainfully employed. You're supposed to be, well, you know, you're not supposed to be well, gainfully employed. That, and uh, this, this is the caveat. Now, if she's appointed as a minister, and she's the minister of the Federal Republic, that's national service. I agree with mm. you. Um, the, the, what should be put in place by the Secretary of the Federal Government is that it's for her not to be paid uh, their salaries and the allowances of a minister, but to be paid the salaries and allowances of a copper. We must, um, we must not... Um, we, we must not turn, change the life of our younger ones as copper. You recall Pitamba, the governor of um, Anna, uh, uh, the governor of um, the present governor of Enugu State. It was alleged, I don't know the back end of the story, that it was when he was serving that um, man in 2003 made him to be his chief of staff. We must not, as a result of service, uh, to change our, uh, our, our children, our youth from, from, from serving their fatherland. No, oh, you think um, anyway, you, you think a core member uh, is, is experienced enough to become minister of culture in a country? Now, what type of the culture? Well, um, as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, uh, she will just be providing direction to the, what the ministry will do. You have the you have the permanent secretary directors and the assistant directors and other levels of civil servant in the ministry that. That, that will guide her in the course of administering that, that, particular, that particular ministry. Uh, I think the lady should be left alone. Okay. Um, she just give her opportunity. Besides, um, how many women do you have in that cabinet? You, one, one of the youngest you have, don't forget, how many youth do you also have in that cabinet? One of the few ones you have, 
people are trying to strike at that. No, no, those who are kicking people. against this are saying there are other youth, <laughs> so many youth in the country that could have replaced her. But then that's your opinion. Let's move forward to the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian leads with battered national image. Step aside, please. The many troubles of green passport holders. That's their big story. Um, ha have you read this? And what, what's this about? Well, um, it is unfortunate the, the challenges the green passport uh, has always had in the international community. Um, you you recall when Boson Tichani was doing his, the Minister of um, Digital or Communication and Digital. You know, when he was doing his screening, a lot of former uh, tweets he has posted was brought to the attention of the National Assembly. And in one of the tweets, Oduji Tijani spoke about um, how useless the green passport was and the rest of it. And um, a lot of people, through, uh, through a lot of data and arrow at him, that he should not be confirmed as minister. If you have experienced what an average Nigerian goes through, and I recall why the senator, the senator representing them, I was put on a defense for him. When he said that they went to Ethiopia and was coming from Addis Ababa, and Nigerians with green passport were separated from others. Mm. And he had to intervene. And then he was being he was being insulted and harassed. That was his business until he came out with his diplomatic passport. That's when they gave him some respect and dignity. It builds on our on, on, on our leaders to ensure that. Um, our citizens are treated with respect and dignity. But the bottom line is that if any country treats my, if I'm the president of Nigeria, if any country treats my citizen with, with utter disrespect, uh, uh, I would also do the same for their citizens when they come to my country. After all, the international community, countries are, inter countries are dependent on one, on one another. All you need to do is to go to the international airport and look at those that are coming in and those that are going out. You discover that a lot of those that are going out are mostly uh, of my pigmentation. They are of African heritage. And those that are coming into this country are of European and Asian heritage. So uh, it's, it's a case of you do me, I do you, until you demand for that respect and you put in place measures to get that respect. Nigerians across the globe will be experiencing this shameful treatment that this, um, this um, shameful treatment that has been met out on them by, by, by aggressive and unknowledgeable, um, ignorant uh, immigration officers of other countries. This, this is just a stereotype. Nigerians are law-abiding. Nigerians are, uh, there's no country that does not have bad eggs in them. So why, why, should, they, why should they kick out on Nigeria? It's, this stereotype is, is, is not good, and it's government that can address it. I hope the current, the, I hope the current Minister of Foreign Affairs one of his interventions would be to talk to the ambassadors of these countries that are, that are notorious for this act. Uh, the last eight years of Gwari's administration, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs happened to be Minister of Foreign Affairs, that even if you ask some people to mention his name, nobody will even record uh, his name. It was, it was such a quiet, moribund international affairs under Gwari's administration. I hope the present Minister of Foreign Affairs will be more proactive in, in this regards, and we engage the ambassadors of this country. Indeed. For indeed, indeed. He couldn't have said it better. There is need for something to be done uh, in that regards. Give some pride to our green passport so that Nigerians, wherever they go, find themselves standing bold and tall without the generalization. That, on the master, you have Nigeria left out as BRICS admits six new members for global influence. Yeah, the uh, well, um, you know, there was the, I think in 2015 when the idea of the BRICS nation came out, I think um, uh, there was attempt to create another block which was called which was called a mint. Then the mint, then I didn't know why, why the mint nation didn't go as aggressive as the BRICS nation have gone. At that particular point in time, the main nation were Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. Um, while the BRICS nations were very, very aggressive in their own approach in forming an economic blood, the main 
nation. Um, uh, I think they went they went to bed with that putting up an aggressive coordination among those na those nations. So if you're having the BRICS, why should Nigeria join join the BRICS? The BRICS can form their own their own um, their own economic block. And this country which I talked about, it means um, um, Malaysia is Malaysia or Mexico? I can't recall, but it's either Malaysia or Mexico, then Indonesia, and Nigeria, and Turkey. These are also big, big economic players in the, in, in, in the world. So I think that um, we should have a lot of economic block um, beyond what you have in the big nation. The means nations should come together and project and proact in order to be a major economic force. We don't need a uni economic force at, at, at the global level. And that's the challenge of globalization, the move towards globalization in 1980. So we need to have different types of economic block. Nations should come together and trade with one another. Once you have to, how many we could do, we have, it's an economic block. So the economic block, you have the European Union, so you have the BRICS nation, and they are trying to admit about 16 or 17 or 11 nations. I think the mid nation to quickly call their own meeting and be, become proactive in their own approach. Mm. Okay, so let's look at some other smaller headlines on the Guardian newspaper. Confusion as court declares a Papa LP national chairman, Sachs Abure. 24 banks lose 5.7 billion naira to frauds in second quarter amid rising digital crimes. 15 IOCs may threaten energy transition in Africa and Europe. And then diphtheria death toll hits 100 in Kano and 26 in Bochi. Let's talk about this confusion in the LP. How true is well, this? Some people are saying it's not what happened in court. But this is what we're seeing on the front pages of the National Dailies. What really is it? Has uh, well, a papa been declared yeah. national chairman of uh, LP? Well, what is very clear is that from the snippet of what I got from the reports, because we don't even know the actual that it was that term. Um, one appeal court, I think that this, uh, this is two contrary judgment Come, coming from courts of the same jurisdiction. And we thought that this issue will have been dealt with. And when one jurisdiction of, of a court has had a matter, Another court of same jurisdiction shouldn't hear the matter so that we don't have conflicting judgment with respect to an issue. I think this matter will finally lead to rest by the Supreme Court, which is a, which is a court of final, final, final order. Um, when, we get, when the matter gets to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will rule on that particular matter. The issue you look at, if you look at the drama that is ongoing, um, and then you are, on the, you are on the X space, you will discover that this is more interesting. The, the people that is not members of Labour Party that uh, releases this type of news, but members of the without the ruling party and the opposition, particularly the ruling party. You see, their members on Twitter so happy, so jubilant, and jumping left, right, and center about this particular issue. I think Labour has been infiltrated, and there's a need for them to put their house in order. I think what they should do is, if I were to counsel them, what they should do do is that. The National Executive Council should be dissolved and a caretaker, caretaker committee should be put in place. Both are Papa and them. And Lamidi, both of them should be asked to. Um, after all, um, APC was able to get rid of the National Chairman and the National Secretary of the Party without much to mm. And um, They should sacrifice both a Papa and Aburi so that the party can make meaningful progress. I think it's an attempt to decimate the opposition. I think they don't understand the game of what is going on. Um, it will affect that party's fortune come 2027 because the energy and time that should be devoted to yes. building the party, establishing proper structure across the length and breadth of the country, building on the gains of 2023, um, that is not being done presently. Uh, too much energy is being dispensed on who is the national chairman yes. of that particular party. And it's a whole lot of distraction, so much distraction as you rightly uh, said and so they're also having this um, uh, at one hour a week only 4.1 percent Nigerians unemployed says NBS and you know I was saying that there's a new matrix which has been introduced now according to this new matrix you work one hour a week you are employed unlike the old 
uh, matrix uh, that was used. I think the old matrix required you to work 40 hours a week to be said to be gainfully employed. But all of that is changed now, which is why uh, we, Nigeria is said to have just 4.1% unemployment rate. And we now, if, you want to, hmm. if you want to do that, um, what's the hourly wages in here? What is the hourly wages in Nigeria compared to the hourly wages in US or whatever? Yeah, I've told you that they use the wrong instrument. When you use the wrong instrument based on wrong indices, based on wrong variables, this is the result you get. So if somebody should work one hour in a week in Nigeria, they work, even somebody that is working, the minimum wage for 30 days work cannot even sustain a family for one week. And I'm not talking about an hourly wages. I'm not accepting that. Whoever accepts <laughs> that instrument is not doing good to, to this nation and to the teaming youths that are unemployed. All right, so let's move to the nature news. The Nature News leads with U.S. pledges $9 million for Nigeria's natural disaster response efforts. The details of that is on page 3 of this newspaper. Then you have Al-Hukma University launches Green Campus Initiative to combat climate change. You have Wike Set's firm agenda for Abuja environmental transformation. You have African leaders set to address climate change challenge. And experts warn, uh, experts worry over Africa's climate agenda ahead of summits. So you want to talk about this U.S. pledge? Well, I hope that that money does not go into private coffers. Um, the, the, the money that is meant to help the, 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 the people um, that suffers from natural disaster, either flood or what have you. Um, I hope and I hope that this money does not go into private coffers. That's just the challenge. We get a lot of intervention from donor agencies in addressing some natural disasters that we witness in this country. Um, this money should be properly monitored so that it goes to the actual victim of, of, of this natural disaster and not into the private pockets of the official, public officials who use to marry another wife and build <laughs> houses and buy, them, buy exotic cars in the process of administering this, the disbursement of this particular fund. Uh, that's, that's it. We've gotten a lot of intervention from a lot of country, and we have no result to show, to show for it. I just hope that there is due to a compliance with, with the guideline that is required for the disbursement of this work to the actual to the actual um, beneficiary of this of this fund for natural disaster. I say amen to that, Chief J.D. Johnson. I say amen to that. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been uh, great having you on Off the Press this morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, and have a wonderful Friday. You too. Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, has joined us. And this morning, he joined us all the way from Kano State. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Do stay with us. We'll be back with our first hot topic. <laughs>